Welcome to Second Opinion, the reviews show here on the Nexus. I'm your host, Brian Mitchell, and today I will be talking about the Sony WX-1000 XM3 headphones. You can find the show notes for this episode at thenexus.tv slash SO60. So to start with, these are some fantastic headphones, but I do think the name could be a little bit improved. A name like wx Hyphen 1000 XM3 is a little bit of a mouthful and hard to remember. Um, I I've discussed these with some coworkers. And we usually just call them the the Sony M3s or something like that. Um, I first heard about these probably just a few months ago. I was following some tweets that uh, Marco Armit was talking about. Um, he was recommending some. I think around Black Friday, so these Sony headphones for. Um, noise canceling wireless ones and then some other ones he used for podcasting and i think similarly marquez brownlee also reviewed the uh, sony wh 1000 xm3s um, i will uh, refer to them as the m3s for the rest of this just for um, a forewarning so uh to start with what's included you get um the headphones obviously um they ship with a six inch usb a to usb c cable um, you get an audio cable as well, so you can use it um, over a wire. Um, you get an airplane adapter and a nice case that can hold it all. So the M3s are following up on the previous model, which has the same name except M2. And the main improvements that I could find on the M3s are that they have better noise cancellation and they charge with USB-C and they're um, 20% lighter. I don't remember by how much, but um, I think the design is a little more oval shaped on the ear ear muffs and the the head band part so that can let them shave off some weight so the big main feature about these is well clearly they play audio um, but they also have wonderful noise cancellation um, new in this model is a dedicated uh, processor that sony calls the hd noise cancelling processor qn1 this seems to be dedicated for noise canceling instead of kind of combining it all in one chip, like I guess previous models. Um, if you're unfamiliar with how active noise cancellation works, um, there are basically a bunch of microphones in these headphones. So they'll listen inside of the each earpiece and on out, on the outside. And so it'll listen to the environment noise around you and then kind of play an inverse uh, audio wave thing. So it comes across as silence. So when you want to use the noise canceling feature, um, you can optimize it towards your environment. And so this will both listen to kind of the personal optimizing as well as um, the atmospheric pressure optimizing. So this comes into play for things like being on an airplane or if you live in a mountainous city and you fly and you land and you are in a beach city, I guess. And I guess the, the atmosphere plays different for how the sound travels through the air. On the side of the headphones, there's a button. So there's on the left hand one, there's a power button and then a button for the noise canceling. And you can switch between having the noise canceling on, switching it off or another mode for ambient sound and where it turns on some of the microphones and plays some of the sound in your environment back through your headphones. So you can hear certain things around you without letting everything through as if it were off. So when you're using noise canceling, um, just due to the nature of how sound works and how it can be blocked through headphones, um, when it when it is on, it blocks the lows better than the highs. So even when you are ha- having the active noise canceling on, um, you'll still hear maybe some people talking around you or louder clanks or other various um, noises. Um, this can sometimes have a strange effect on your ears where it's almost like there's a pressure on your ears when um, you have the headphones on with nothing playing, but the noise canceling is also on. And that's, I think comes from, I was reading some article about this a week or two ago where when your ears have part of the frequencies are silent and everything else is kind of normal or at least at a reduced volume, but at a level much higher than the lower frequency, it comes across as, kind of abnormal and your ears react in a way that you're not really used to. And so it kind of feels like a pressure or annoyance. And I do feel that sometimes when I'm using them at work before I play music, but once you play music and things and it's quite silent and you get used to it, 
So the various modes of the noise canceling include total noise canceling, which is kind of what I've just been talking about. Um, there's also a wind reduction mode. I haven't tested this. I've never worn these outside, but it's there. And then there's the ambient sound, which has 20 different levels. So you literally select ambient sound and you drag a slider going from ambient sound level one to level 20. Um, there's also a little checkbox there for focus on voice option. And I think that just lets through common frequencies that voices carry through. Um, I should also note that all of these settings are configured through the iPhone app or Android app. So you download the app and that lets you do things like update the firmware and set all of these settings. Um, and that's where you do things like optimizing the noise canceling profile and setting a lot of these settings. On the headphones themselves, all you can do is really toggle between total noise reduction, noise reduction off, and the ambient sound. I guess that would be to the previous level that you had set. So there's also a or an adaptive sound control mode, and that seems to detect your actions. I've never used this. Um, I don't know if it uses the app or the headphones to figure out what environment you're in, but there are four presets, and that's for staying, walking, running, and transport. And they look like they're basically presetting the ambient sounds and the focus on voice for various modes of uh, activity or locations. So I primarily use these, actually exclusively use these through Bluetooth. I use the Beats Solo 3 wireless headphones before this, which have Apple's W1 chip. I also have a pair of AirPods, which also has a W1 chip. So it's very easy to switch between devices. Um, I can use my iPhone or my Mac or an iPad to basically move the pairing from one of those devices to the current device that I'm using. Whereas with these M3s, I need to turn on the headphones and keep holding that power button to enter pairing mode, and then I can connect to the device. So there's just a little more of a step to connect to them when I'm switching devices. That's not a huge problem for me because I mostly just leave them at work and connect to my work laptop. But if I do want to bring them home for traveling or something, I will need to repair them every time I switch devices. The audio quality over Bluetooth seems pretty good. Um, when I'm in the app, it says AAC, when I'm at least connected to my iPhone. Um, I know Sony also has some information saying that they support LDAC, which seems like a higher quality codec, I think up to 900 kilobit per second. Um, they have a few different Sony devices that uh, supports that. I don't know if you need full Sony end-to-end -to, -end to do that or if other devices can pick it up, but they're at least thinking about higher quality audio. So the, the left earphone also includes the audio input, um, which you use for plugging in a wire. But on the right ear cuff, um, you have basically another flat surface, but it's actually a kind of a touch surface. And this lets you do use gestures. So if you swipe up, it'll bump up the volume. If you swipe down, it'll turn down the volume. If you tap it, it'll play. Tap again, it'll pause. Um, and you can swipe kind of in front of you for next track and behind you for previous. Um, there's also a another mode, which is which they call quick attention. And you basically hold your hand over it and keep holding it there. And then it turns down or pauses your music or whatever you're listening to. And then turns on the microphones for the environment around you so you can hear everything around you. This is pretty cool, and I've I've kind of heard people talking around me at work, and I'll sometimes just uh, hold my hand over my right ear and listen in on what they're saying, and it's quite a handy feature, and I think that's pretty smart that they included that in the headphones. So all of those are mostly the features that I use day-to-day -day and the ones that are important to me. So these the next things I'm going to talk about, I don't have as much personal experience with or really as much interest in using. Um, there's a microphone in these headphones, so you can use them to make calls. I've never tried it out, but I expect it works reasonably well, at least. Um, there's a, a toggle for when you're doing wireless audio to choose a priority on sound quality versus stable connection. I always keep it at sound quality. It seems to work well enough for me. Uh, there's an NFC reader on the right ear earmuff. Um, I'm not really sure how that works. I think it's for pairing. Uh, I have an iPhone, so I can't do that. So in theory, it works and it's pretty slick. <laughs> um, you can also switch that um, ambient 
sound control button on the left earmuff to be Google Assistant or Amazon Alexa trigger, but I don't use those. I use Siri, and even then, I probably wouldn't want to use that on my headphones, so I just have it as toggling noise cancellation. And even then, I pretty much leave it on noise cancelling all the time. Um, you can also uh, turn on an equalizer, and this has some presets for, you know, treble boost, bass boost, a couple other various profiles. Seems to work pretty well, um, and that will persist until you, you know, change it in the app again, uh, despite whatever device you're connected to. Um, kind of related, but not entirely, is a virtual surround sound. This is really um, EQ profiles in addition to reverb profiles and some other um, audio effects. Um, they have an arena, club, outdoor stage, and concert hall preset. Uh, I think they sound pretty good. They're pretty convincing. Um, I definitely uh, can relate most to club, and it the audio definitely sounds more club-like, you know, like heavy bass that's being boosted through and kind of a little more distorted and a small amount of reverb and yeah pretty nice I wouldn't ever want to listen to that on headphones though so I'm really a little unsure as why they have it in them at all uh, there's there's also the ability to set your sound position control so this is basically what surround sound might be better to describe it as and that basically lets you set um where you want the sound to be coming from in relation to you. So you can set front, back, left, right, or um, on you, which is kind of the default when that being turned off. So it kind of virtualizes a surround sound from where that sound is coming from. So if for some reason you want it to sound like it's coming from in front to the left, you, you can do that. I really have no idea why someone would want to do that, but I guess that's an option. Uh, there's also a mode called DSEEHX. As far as I can tell, that's a Sony thing that will upscale compressed audio. So basically MP3s and AAC files, if it's, I'm guessing, a low enough bit rate or something like that, it'll try to fill in the gaps in the file and upscale it, similar to how a TV would from 1080p to 4K. So it's kind of probably using some sort of machine learning and blah, blah, blah to add in more signal in the middle or smooth it out. Uh, there's an auto power off feature. So if your device isn't paired to anything for five minutes or something you can set, it'll turn off. I've used that once or twice. That's a, it's a good feature to have. Um, and you can also turn off notification and voice guide or change it to one of 15 languages. Um, with that, that's pretty much all the features. I, I really like them. I think they're much better sound than the Beats Solo 3 I was coming from. The noise canceling is truly wonderful. Um, from what I can tell, it seems like it's some of the best noise canceling you can buy right now. Um, I'm going to test them out on an airplane in less than 24 hours as I'm recording this. Uh, I think it's in the past for the listener. Um, so we'll see how that goes. I will definitely want to be reca recalibrating that when I'm in the air. We'll see how that affects the noise cancellation. I guess I should probably say their 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 cost, their retail value is three hundred fifty dollars, which is not cheap at all. Um, I will say they're definitely on the higher end of headphones, at least for like a wireless noise cancellation headphone. So maybe they're for you, maybe not. I don't know. Um, I will. You know, they're not they're not that much more expensive than the the Beats studio at least i think those are about 350 as well so if you're if you're considering beats or something consider again and something like these sony m3s they're i think significantly better not not just in sound quality but um, in noise cancellation and other features as well so with that i i think i'm going to give it two thumbs up and hope the that these last quite a long time If you are interested in finding out more about these headphones, maybe I'll tweet about them, maybe not. You can find me on Twitter at BrianMitchL or my website, BrianM.me. If you're interested in using any part of this episode, this is released under a Creative Commons attribution. So as long as you link back to 
uh, thenexus.tv slash SO60. You are welcome to do so. Um, you can also discuss this episode on our subreddit, which is reddit.com slash r slash thenexustv. And if you like what we're doing, you can head on over to our Patreon, which is patreon.com slash thenexustv. With that, have a good one and happy listening. The Nexus. The Nexus. The Nexus TV. Podcasts from, from the, the Technological, technological Convergence. Convergence.